Welcome to the second part of the basic modeling and simulation tutorial. In this part we'll go over how to use drag and drop to create models in Wolfram System Modeler. As last time these instructions that I have here will be distributed in the chat window so you can follow along for yourself. We'll start by reusing ready-made classes in System Modeler as a starting point for our new model. So first we'll learn how to find classes in the class browser. Then we'll make a copy of the class and finally we'll learn how to save your copy, how to save your new model. Then we'll customize the model by adding new connections and components to the model. We'll change parameters and we'll learn how to add completely new parameters to the model. Lastly, we'll simulate this custom class. We'll learn how to set experiment settings and simulation settings and how to add plots that will be displayed upon simulation. I will start by opening up a new session of System Modeler. Firstly, we'll locate the inverted pendulum model inside of the introductory samples systems subpackage. In this tutorial we'll construct a model of a DC motor. If you recall from the previous tutorial the inverted pendulum model already had a DC motor component. You can see it here in the diagram view. A component is an instance of a model. You can find the definition of a certain component by right clicking it and selecting go to class in class browser. In the class browser packages will be expanded to reveal the model in question. Just like the runnable inverted pendulum model the electrical motor model can be opened by double clicking it in the class browser. This will be a good starting point for your own DC motor. However, if you try and change anything in the model, for example trying to move or delete a component, you will not be able to. All built-in models in System Modeler are read-only and this will be indicated in the box in the top right corner of the diagram view. The reason for this is that changing the definition of the electrical motor model here would change all the models that utilize it as a component. You can still reuse the model however. To do this you need to create a copy of the electrical motor model. Right click electrical motor in the class browser and select duplicate. Alternatively you can press Control D on Windows or Linux or Command D on Mac OS. A dialog window will ask you if you want to rename the class. Check the box next to rename copy and type in DC motor. Then press OK. The copied model will open in the diagram view. Notice the grid lines behind the model. The presence or absence of grid lines is one of the easiest ways to tell if a model is modifiable or not. Now, instead of read only, the box in the top right of the diagram view will say unsaved. To save a model, with it opened in the diagram view, press Ctrl S on Windows and Linux or Command S on Mac OS. You will be prompted to select the location in which to save your model. By Modelic convention, the file should have the same name as the model, followed by the extension MO. By now, you should have opened three different models in Model Center. When you open up a new model, the old model stays in a separate tab. You can go ahead and close the inverted pendulum and electrical motor models, as we won't be revisiting them in this tutorial. Either press the X button next to each of them or right click the DC motor tab and select close all but this. 
Using the motor model as a starting point, you will now add your own components to modify the motor. On the left and right side are connectors meant for making outside connections to other components. In this tutorial, you'll make a self-contained model. You can start by removing the blue and white connection components. To remove a component, select it by clicking it and press delete. The next step is to add a new component to the diagram. In this tutorial, you'll be using components from the Modelica standard library. This library can be found under the Libraries tab in the class browser. You can expand a library in the same way as you did with the example packages, by clicking the arrow next to the icon. A signal source is needed to set the voltage over the circuit. A range of signal sources can be found in the block sublibrary under Sources. The ramp model produces a ramping signal and will be a good fit for your DC motor model. To add the ramp model as a component to your diagram, click it in the class browser and drag it into the diagram. Once on the diagram, you can let go of the mouse button and the component will be placed. After the component has been placed, you can move it around on the diagram by dragging it around. The next step is to connect the output of the ramp component to the input of the voltage source. To do this, switch to the connection line tool by clicking the connection line tool icon in the toolbar or by pressing C on your keyboard. With the connection line tool, first click the small triangle indicating the output from the ramp. Then click the filled large triangle indicating the input to the voltage source. A line will be drawn between them indicating that a connection has been made. Next, it is time to add something for the motor to drive. On the right side of the motor, add an inertia component. Since the motor is producing a mechanical rotational motion, you'll find this component under the Mechanics, Rotational and Components sublibraries. Add an inertia component to the diagram like you previously did with the ramp and connect it to the white circle on the motor component. When adding new components to the diagram, they will often have some default values for their parameters, typically 0 or 1 in whatever default unit it is. You will now change this to your own parameter values. If you select a component by clicking it, a parameter tab will be shown in the bottom of model center. Grayed out numbers indicate the default parameter values. In the field labeled duration, type in 5 to indicate that it shall take 5 seconds for the ramp to reach its maximum value. Next to start time, type in 1. The next step is to set the moment of inertia on the motor load. You might have noticed that the parameters that appear in the parameter tab when no component is selected. These are associated with the model rather than any particular component. You can add your own parameters to the top view by right clicking in the parameters tab and selecting insert parameters. You'll get a new dialog that allows you to add parameters to your model. To use the correct unit for your new parameter, check the radio button next to SI unit and scroll down to inertia. To search faster, you can start typing inertia on your keyboard. In the name field, type in J to give the parameter a name. 
next to the description field. Give it a descriptive text such as moment of inertia on the motor load. Leave the value field blank for now. Press add to add the new parameter to the parameters tab. Then close the window by pressing close. If you made any mistakes, you can at any time bring back up the parameter dialog by clicking on the blue J. Now you can add a value for the moment of inertia by typing it in the field next to the parameter. Since you selected a unit for the parameter, you can select between different prefixes for the inertia unit. Click on kilograms times square meters and select kilograms times square centimeters. In this tutorial you'll use a very light load on the motor, typing 1 in the input field. We haven't actually used the parameter on the motor load yet. To do that, select the inertia component and type in J in the field next to the parameter J. Now, whenever you change a value on the top level parameter, the parameter in the component will be changed as well. Collecting important parameters in the top level makes it easier to change them. It also means that you can reuse them in multiple places across your model. Since you've made your own modifications to the original model, it is a good idea to check that everything seems to have been connect connected correctly. Press the validate class button to check this. When clicked, System Modeler will count the number of variables and the number of equations. For a model to be valid, every variable needs to be able to be described by one equation. If you have followed all the steps correctly, you should see the following. Since there are as many variables as there are equations, the model is globally balanced. Press the play button to start the simulation. Once you do, the following window will pop up. Since this is a completely new model, there are no experiment settings that tell Simulation Center how long the simulation should run for. You can set this by clicking on Review Settings. The default option is to simulate for 10 seconds. Change this to 100 seconds in order to give the motor a bit more time to reach steady state. When you press OK, the model will be simulated. Unlike the previous tutorial, upon simulation no plot will be immediately shown. If you're continuing straight from the previous tutorial, you might have one or more simulation tabs open already. To avoid confusion, go ahead and close them by right-clicking one of the tabs and selecting Close All. You can also go ahead and close the previous experiments. Right-click the DC Motor tab and select close all but this. Next, make a plot of the angular velocity of the motor. This can be found by exp expanding the EMF1 component and plotting the variable called W. This plot can be particularly useful for understanding the system. Should s should save it to the model. Right click in the plot window and select add plot to model. Give it a descriptive name such as motor speed and check the box next to the preferred plot option in order to display it immediately upon simulation. Go ahead and add another plot to the model. Click the new plot tab button from the toolbar 
to add a blank tab. Then plot the voltages over the EMF1, resistor and voltage source components, each variable called V. Also add a new subplot and plot, plot the current running through the circuit. For example, by plotting the variable i on the EMF1. Like the motor speed plot, add this new plot to the model and give it a descriptive name, such as circuit voltage and current. With the custom plot added, we've reached the end of this tutorial. Before I leave you, I'd like to reiterate the things that we've learned in this part. We've learned how to reuse ready-made classes, how to duplicate them and how to customize them by adding our own components and connections, as well as our own parameters. Lastly, we learned how to simulate the model and set up custom experiment settings and adding and by adding new plots to the model. With this part being done, we'll open it up to questions from from you before moving on to the last part which will deal with how to find different components inside of System Modeler.